think it is, but I think it's also physical because um, the physical sensations you get. Like when you are in your car and you go over a hill really fast and it gets your tummy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's probably one of my favorite feelings in the world. Mm -hmm. Roller coasters do the same thing to you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the thing is, you know, you seek after that for so long and then you start getting used to it and then you look for something more thrilling and more dangerous. So it's a type of pleasure seeking. Right. Like a drug drug seeking behavior. Yeah. And do you think that's unhealthy or maybe not the a behavior that people should not engage in or something? I think it's healthier than sitting in a closet chanting ohm. Okay. Why? It just, I don't know. I feel like you're expanding more rather than if you're just sitting quietly doing nothing. So that's how I think of it. I think that when we put ourselves in situations that push the envelope, mm -hmm. that test, um, it has to do with fear, very much about our security and our confidence and our... Um, ability to feel like it's going to be okay in the face of situations that might make us uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So we want things to test us like a game mm -hmm. is no fun. Football would be pointless if there were no defense. Yeah. Ooh, everybody wouldn't go nuts for the touchdown. Mm -hmm. Video games would be pointless if they, they're just you running across some, there's nothing to mm -hmm. kill you. Yeah. So without, um, to the game, it requires things to be afraid of, mm -hmm. for us to feel that, to grow, mm -hmm. to become stronger. So it's a self-improvement of some kind. Or maybe overcoming fear in general. Overcoming fear in general. Um, and why would we want to overcome fear at all? The only reason I would personally is because of having to deal with it for so long. And is that's a bad thing? I mean, was it unpleasant? Was mm -hmm. it, yeah? Yeah, when you get sick and tired. You had enough? Mm hmm So you don't want 20 more years? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, before we close this down, I also wanted to say something about um, I wanted you to say something about this idea that people have that they are enlightened and now they understand they're awake and like you said they're basically sitting doing nothing mm -hmm. and like well, now I know it all. All I have to do is sit here on my stump. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of people are getting the wrong idea and just um, kind of missing the point. So it's, my question would be, if, if that's what you're doing, if that's what your goal is, then why are you still here? Because this was probably not the best planet to incarnate on if that's what you wanted to do. Okay, so like we were saying, you need, if you're going to have a game, you need something to accomplish in that game or it's pointless. Right. So we have a planet of fear and rage and murder and suffering and a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. But if we just look at the good things and we pretend that the bad things aren't existing, that's kind of what you're talking about. Um, but it's also, in order to actually make a difference, one can't be coming from a, just another fearful agenda. Right. Because then you're just spreading, people are going to emulate that, and you're spreading people who pursue a fearful agenda, which just drums up more fear. So the way to win the game is to become, to jump up another level, to become untouchable by that fear. Like you said, the point to become mm -hmm. fearless, where you stop suffering. And from a place of not suffering, then you can offer not suffering. And it's still challenging. People will still fight. People will still resist you. Mm -hmm. When you say, stop screaming. It's okay. This is just a, a dream. It's a game. Right. We set it up this way. Mm -hmm. You know, there is, when you go to a movie, a horror movie, 
um, we can fully become the character and become engaged, but it's, it's psychotic to forget that you have the ability to remember it's a movie and in fight with people when they try to tell you that it's just a movie. It is not. You can't prove that. You know, and mm-hmm. scream and say, no, no, I'm going to be destroyed. Oh, it's awful. Um, so part of the game is relationship. And just like you would help your child if you were suffering. Part of the game is to express love mm-hmm. by removing suffering, by giving, by letting go of selfishness and giving to another person um, who, their, where their pain and their fear and their terror becomes more important than our petty little um, greedy goal for that day or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, not that there's, I mean, then there's a place, I mean, most people, at least in the Western world, are caught up in pursuing the Lexus and the, the career goals and the education and, and um, the sexual pleasure and the drugs and... Um, not, not like that's bad, bad, bad. Um, because these things do, it's part of our training, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but more often than not, when we're in a pleasure seeking behavior, um, we can expand and grow through that and become more fearless and then offer that fearlessness to others to remove their suffering. But a lot of times, um, it, we go f- too far the other way, sitting on a stump. Right. And we become, in reaction, and neurotic and afraid, um, unable to do without that form, that experience. Mm-hmm. And um, this is what Kurt was saying in his video about creating the heaven, the bubble. Right. Unable to have that just be wiped away. The Buddhists create this beautiful sand mandala and immediately wipe it away. Just let it go. Because to cling is the foundation. That's that's what causes the forgetting, the terror, the ignorance, the suffering. Mm -hmm. But not everybody's supposed to get this right now. There's supposed to be a world here where we go on YouTube and talk to people about how last night they were crying alone on the bathroom floor and praying to God for help and overlooking the fact that we're here. Mm -hmm. And we're here by choice. Maybe not as a particular dream character, but who we really are, the central center. and that there's beauty in this drama, that when the plot is thick, it's fun. And when it's not fun, then it's time to remember. Mm-hmm. Then it can be fun again. Right. And we set it up to where the only way out is through. So by sitting on your stump, you're kind of prolonging Well, I don't want to do do absolute no sitting on stumps because for some people, um, there's been so much suffering and and so much heartache. They've been wounded so deeply. I've spent time living in forests. I've spent time homeless um, in order to get to the point where I can talk with other people about this, Mm -hmm. um, working through my own crap. And so a time... We're, we're antisocial animals and we're social animals. And yeah. we don't want to say never. Right. Well, I think absolutely, temporarily. But for people that think, okay, well, this is the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it's bad. Um, if that's what they want to do. But that would be my question. If that's if that's what you want to do from here on out, mm-hmm. then why even be here? What? I don't think that in actual experience, if you actually get really close to somebody who is not living, somebody mm-hmm. who's avoiding life, who's, um, they're not not doing anything, right? They could be smoking pot on the couch <laughs> in mom's basement. 
Yeah. Okay, they could be um, chanting. And there's no value judgment about putting your attention on this or that, if that interests you. There's no value, like... What's the point of stretching in yoga all the, all the time for hours every day if your body's just going to be burnt to ash anyway? You know, regardless. I mean, you may live a few extra years, but why a lifetime of effort for something temporary that in the end doesn't mean anything? So, you know, people could say, oh, look, she's off to her yoga class again. That's pointless. But staring at a candle can be every bit as meaningful to the person doing it, the relationship, because in that um, navel gazing, a lot of stuff can come up and be faced in that quiet that wasn't even able to come up when somebody's furiously engaged in activity. And a lot of the times when people furiously have to do, there are people who can't be alone, who can't sit still, that always have to be distracted. Mm -hmm. And drug addicts, to avoid dealing with their shit that would come up if they stopped distracting themselves a lot of that and that's why they do what they do so there's form addicts um, and more often than not when people are running around engaged in activity it's not as a free being who realizes that's why we're here mm -hmm. and has the ability to look at it from a variety of perspectives it's as a slave and um, somebody who's not able to face themselves because it's too painful or too scary. You know, people who were raped as children, people who were beaten as children, and some of them have split off entirely different sections of their brain so they don't have to face it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many young people who are getting into this and haven't really even experienced life mm -hmm. at all or dealt with, they don't even know the meaning of stress yet, 18, 20 years old. And the first thing they cling to is the idea that nothing really matters. Mm -hmm. This is all a game. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit on mom's couch in the basement and smoke pot for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. That's that's more what I was talking about. It's yeah. where I feel like they're missing the whole point. Well, I mean, they're doing what they want to in a way, mm -hmm. right? That's what they want to do. Yeah. Maybe they haven't thought it out to the point where they realize that in the long term, this isn't going to be what they want to do. But at least for now, <laughs> there's uh, some some type of experience going on that they value. So I would say more often than not, responsibility is used like a club by a fear-based society to get people to conform. And when people have been hit with that club enough, sometimes it's appropriate to say, fuck you world, close yourself off, and not be their little slave anymore. Right. Um, and if there's been some kind of, uh, you know, some, some issues and some pain and some heartache, sometimes people, um, need to process that and feel those feelings and people go about grieving and mourning and processing and healing in different ways. Those times of healing or those times of antisocial behavior or, um, having some, intel believing some intellectual idea that you should care about not caring. Um, that's, it can't exist in an environment of love it, it, for long. What? It gets dissolved, broken up, and we move into new experience. Okay. <laughs> Are we done? Mm-hmm.